parallel executions in Java, right? Or multi-threading is something which is something which is asynchronous process. Now uh, we just see before understanding multi-threading, we have to know like some something before uh, actually you know understanding multi-threading. Now, so what is uh, so uh, you guys know what is the difference between uh, multi-threading or multitasking? Any any guess like what is multitasking or multi what is multi-threading or we say multi-processing like so are these terms same or eh? no but I, I don't I'm just taking a guess this is Ron I don't think they're the same um, yes. multitasking for example um, if you have two programs of open at the same time mm -hmm. and uh, in these programs they carry out specific functions mm -hmm. like uh, for example if you have a word processor open as well as a calculator mm -hmm. or maybe multi uh, multitasking involves uh, yeah. uh, hello I can't hear you hello yeah. there's a really terrible, <laughs> terrible yeah, static noise some sort of uh, you know noise is coming up actually so you guys yeah. can just uh, mute up your uh, mics yeah so that you are on I think it's fine now yeah yeah so so for example if you uh, multitasking would probably involve more of um, like if if programs share the same resource mm -hmm. so the same processes uh, whereas multi-threading there may be several different I'm just taking a guess Threads yeah. involved. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect actually. Right. That is what uh, is actually a multitasking and front person. Yeah, perfect. Right. Yeah. Cool. Uh <coughs> yeah. No issues. So there are a few things which we have to actually know because you know we'll be in real time we'll be confused about tasking, it is multitasking, multi threading and multi processing. They are never the same, right? They are never the same. So technically, let us see first. Understand what is those? What are these terms first? Which is first, like what is a single task first? What exactly is a task? And so whenever we talk about something called task or thread or something, right? So the main, the main, uh, you know, lookup or the main target focus light is processor, right? Because we all do. Uh, all these things in order to use the processor optimizely, right? That is what the main uh, purpose of multi-threading is. Like, uh, we want to use a uh, processor in a way that you know uh, will keep the processor busy. So that that will be the main goal of uh, your program, because you should program should use as much as a processor because the processor is is again you know is is costlier. Uh, when when it comes to normal uh, memory, memory is co memory is uh, you know memory in the sense the RAM like how much uh, you know memory you are using for execution is costly, and the the physical memory like where you are storing is costly, right? Or or the bunch of lines you are writing which is execution of the each of line the hook. so whether you are writing the you know complete. Uh, statements which are actually varied so you you are not writing something which is like you know we have seen something uh, in if and uh, switch case right if we have uh, some hundred conditions so then we should go for something called switch and not for if why because if they if there is anything any valid valid condition which is at 98 uh, line let us say or 98 uh, condition check if it is if else right then what happens 97 conditions will be conditions or statements will be executed which which we don't want right and it will go to so, so there in switch what happens your process execution will directed to directly to uh, 98 step so what we are you know what we have seen here is we are we are saving some cpu time for some value added uh, execution and not for something which we don't need so that is how we should always, you know, try to write some program, right? Where the main, uh, even the main focus will be in CPU usage, right? Your program should not be like, you know, it should not eat up all the process because 
it up all the CPU process because some tasks or something like if you try to connect to some uh, like uh, let me give an example of um, yeah, some something which is uh, the cr cross network let us say let us say you are trying to uh, connect to some secure network of the company let us say you are using some Citrix or some you know some Webex or some Cisco connection to use right so those applications are very heavy applications which will be continuously buffering up your cross network right and they have uh, uh, their uh, way that you know once you connect to the cross network in which is which will be in sub 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 network land right you will be learning these terms when we actually come to java network okay? so so what happens is a complete you know uh, bandwidth also will go down for other uh, things and even your cpu usage will be more in case of this uh, cross network uh, connection so those applications are something which will come up during your real times also now so now so uh, what what is our actual business is to understand what is single task so based on single task we'll understand what is multitask right and then we will we'll move on to something called multiprocessing first what is multiprocessing right and based on this then we will understand some multi right yeah anyways this will, is, this will be some theory but it's worth knowing all these three terms because whenever we you know hear about these three terms it, it should be clear uh, from now on that oh, okay this is what we are speaking about and whatever uh, Ron just explained is is the same thing which I'm going to just give you I, I'm going to enlighten, enlighten the same concept in much more I mean, uh, deeper here right in, even in, in the case of memory allocations for here right so now uh, so after this so you have to know what is synchronized execution Right. Or if we also say synchronize, yeah, synchronize, and we say asynchronous execution, or yeah, execution. So what are these two terms? So we'll we'll see. We'll be seeing uh, <coughs> once we are actually done with the multitasking and multiprocessing and, and these terms, right? So so this will be uh, something which will be startup of multithreading where. Uh, basically, uh, we'll see how the thread works and uh, how in, in in general it is, and then we'll come to actual Java threading, where we can we, we can see how to create a separate path of execution. Right? Yeah. So now, <coughs> so let's see what what exactly is a multi-threading first. So multi-threading is nothing but you know a separate path of execution of your statements. Now, uh, so JVM is the one which actually takes care of your creation of threads or you know uh, your uh, uh, creation of whenever you are creating a class that is a simple class right. So even that is a thread. So whenever JVM wants to compile or, or, or run something right, so what it does is it will create a separate path of execution the separate path of execution is nothing but a thread right and then it will it will start processing so without creating a thread your jvm will never start execution that's the first one now so whenever we wrote till now what we have done is we have run we we have see we have seen something like main creating separate classes creating objects and all right which means we were using a single line of execution so what is a single line of execution is like if you if you have some 10 lines or 10 lines of statements in a program right so what happens here each and every line of statement will be executed at once it won't execute two different uh, lines parallelly right so it will execute the first statement let us say if I'm saying int i is equal to 10 and then I am saying int i is equal to i divided by 2 and I said sys out of i which means all these three lines will be executed 
executed step by step right so this type of execution is called as synchronized execution right and when we say synchronized execution which means uh, uh, there is a main thread going on which is if you don't have any of the threads created your normal class or normal execution path is nothing but a main thread which is a separate thread which is created by your jvm right yeah so the synchronized path by so when we actually start multi threading in java right i mean creating a thread so first we will be checking out what exactly is a main thread and then we'll move on to something in main in uh, multi thread right now now so what is asynchronous execution is creating some process in java so that you know different parts of your uh, program are running parallelly right so which means you have a class and you have another class where both the classes are running at a say at the same time technically speaking that is nothing but your asynchronous execution so this asynchronous execution word is is a bit more what i just said so we'll come up with that right now so that that is what is a thread and that is how the, your jvm actually creates thread for your uh, execution now let's understand what is a single task first right let me just take the presentation <coughs> So you can already see it's a previous batch where I'm explaining that. <coughs> so <coughs> single tasking goes uh, in this way. Actually, in, in anyways, this single tasking is uh, is actually was there in our legacy machines, like legacy machines in the sense of older machines where. Uh, there, was, there were there were there uh, were you know the CPUs which doesn't supported something called a multiple tasking things right. So at that time let's see let me just uh, give you a simple use case what used to happen in single tasking. So now let us say this is your program path right and yeah so this is what uh, this let us say this is your time time axis to, towards uh, your and <coughs> yeah and let us say this is processing let us say yeah, your processor is here this your processor something yeah now <coughs> let us say there is a student who actually started writing a program now so when he started writing program let us say he is taking some 15 minutes to write a program which means uh, let us just take it took a 15 minute to write a program and then what he did is he whenever he was writing a program right your process is completely free of that like your process is completely idle right so nothing has been happening here now so after writing the program for 15 minutes what he did he just he tried to compile and execute a program now the compilation or execution if you are writing a code for 15 minutes right so what happens your compilation or processing will be done in no time so whenever you just try to compile or compile and then execute right it won't take like like a fraction of second to run right which means let us say it took this processing time here right which is some processing time of your process now at this point we we have used something called processor here for for some some let us say one one millisecond we have used a processor because it won't take more than if you're writing a program for 15 minutes and if you try to execute and run it up it won't take more than a millisecond let us say right i'm just taking a uh, use case here right now so after this what happened uh, he tried to write some more code let us say at, at this time it took only 10 minutes and again he tried to do some 
uh, execution again it, it will take again let us say 1 millisecond to uh, run right and then oh, what happened yeah and then so what he did he again took some 20 minutes let us say to write a program and then he executed now you can see here whenever he try to run or uh, execute and run his program right so it, won't, it is not taking much of time here so you can see only one two three three milliseconds of your how much time it is like 20 30 45 minutes so in 45 minutes of time right we have used our processor only till some part actually because while writing program you are, you are not supposed to do anything else it won't support first thing so that is nothing but a single task supporter machines right so when you are writing program which means you have to write only the program you can't do anything else so that's why i said when a, when a student is writing a program right because when he is writing a program he can't do anything else he, he can just go and write something on notepad that's it nothing else right so that's how you can see that in single tasking so around across across around 45 minutes we are using our processor not even for a second right it's a it's a complete uh, fraction of second which where we are getting some output out of that which means you can see if 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 it is multiplied to so many so many employees or students right so it will be so costly that you are not using our process so these are your single task occurs now what is the problem here the main problem here is you are keeping your processor idle so that is the main problem now so whenever we are writing a program in the sense we are loading something on on our processor at the time of our execution only here this point so remaining time we are doing our own task that's it this is a task this is a task you are writing and this is a task you are writing which is if your task here is writing a program over here right and the task here uh, at the end of here is running something again writing doing some other task execution doing some other task execution so this is nothing but your single task now so when we actually go with this right we can't survive first point because keeping the processor to that level of uh, idle is not uh, you know uh, it, it is not you know it is not optimized because you know for keeping your processor up right so it will be consuming so much of power right so you are wasting that uh, time of your uh, processing time. Now, let's look up what is the thing, uh, multitasking here, which means we have seen something which is we are loading up there and during loading of your uh, tasking, right, or single task or, or, or a task which you are loading in single tasking, you can't go and actually open some other program. Now, how multitasking support uh, uh, is is better than your single task let's see now let me let me just take up take out a simple use case again which is let us say i have a, 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 like a, i'll just take um, the environment here or an operating system where let us say i have a processor so i have a, a processor which is actually taking care of my uh, os operation let us say so here let us say I have opened one task. So let me just take an example of uh, my word. I have opened my word here and I'll open one more Excel over here. Okay. Excel. And I'll open some media player here. Okay. And let us say yeah, I'm I'm just uh, opening up some uh, other task which is let us say I'm opening some Outlook here, which is my email client. Let us say Outlook. So what I did, I uh, once I started my machine, right? I just clicked on each and these four tasks at a time. Now what happens here? Now your processor, what it does is every time you load a task, right? So the first, for the first thing processor will do is it will share the time of execution. Now let us say for 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 completing a task in uh, for 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 completing a task let us say uh, my processor is taking some 1 millisecond i'm just taking an example it can be much faster than this right so 1 millisecond let us say right 
so which means when we actually load four different tasks into this processor right the time will be sliced up which is it will create four different uh, time slots which is here it will be one fourth of millisecond and whenever I say one fourth of millisecond which means my processor will give you only one fourth millisecond CPU time for opening your window or sorry word in the same way one fourth of your time for Excel one fourth of your time for media player and the same way one fourth of time for your output right now so anyways so for the first step here is slicing up the time for different tasks so a processor is done with that now now the how does the actual uh, processing happen now so what it does so based on the first come first serve right because whenever you're clicking on uh, different uh, you know things and if you want to open that right so what it does it will take so even you will take some milliseconds gap or a second gap to <coughs> actually click on uh, something right so in that way what will get so processor will get four tasks anyways but there will be a first task second task third task third task and fourth task now so let us say the first which actually came to processor right is a uh, word what happens the processor will work on opening your microsoft word ms word and how much time it will spend is it will spend only one fourth of millisecond that's it now let us say in one fourth of millisecond my word didn't got opened so what happens then so what happens is the processor will save the current state of word into some temporary memory cache and then he, after this it will just move, move to next task which is excel now my processor is taking care of my excel now which means again it will spend one fourth of time in opening my excel now let us say in one fourth of time it is not opening now again what it does it will save the current state current state of excel like till what what uh, till what state it got open uh, that state will be saved in temporary memory again it will go to your media player again one fourth of millisecond if it is not completing again go back to your outlook and spend some time here now you can see that each and every task has been executed for some time now what it does is again it will come back to your previous process previous task it will check whether this task is being completed in my previous execution or not it was not because uh, it spent only one fourth of millisecond and the temporary uh, memory have got the last state of your word now what it does again it will spend one fourth of millisecond again in word now let us say in in second round what happened again it didn't open you are you are you are opening some heavy document and it didn't open even in second time let us say what it does so again it will spend one fourth of millisecond and the last state of your word will be saved again in your temporary mode it will again go to excel again let us say now again it will spend one fourth of millisecond over here now let us say excel got open so fine that's fine if even if it got open before one fourth of sign what it does it will move on to the next pro, next task now let us say this is done now again it will spend some one fourth of millisecond in your media player now let us say your media player hasn't opened one for in this time what happens again it will save the temporary state of your media player it will go to outlook now let us say your outlook again it will spend one fourth of millisecond in outlook now let us say this got loaded in one fourth of millisecond now that's fine now again it will go back to word again again what it does it will spend again one fourth of millisecond so this process will continue until all the tasks are completed again in between if any other task comes up right again this time will be sliced up again and it will go to this task again sliced up again because we are using one processor here right so what happens every time a task is added right it will okay, be so yeah so quick question so uh, once the programs are loaded 
Um, will, will the time still be one fourth? So out of the four programs, um, yeah. would the time still be a fourth of a millisecond, or will it be reallocated and and, um, one fifth, and one um, fifth. you know what I mean? Yeah, I understand. One fifth. Yeah. One fifth. Yeah. See, yeah. it all depends. Again, how it depends is let us say in this process of execution, I said two are completed, right? Which means I have only three tasks here. One, two, three. So time will be sliced up to one third, right? Am I right? Right, Ron? Yes. But yes. The, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Basically, your question was right. When I have four tasks, and if any other task is coming up, then obviously time will be equally sliced up, one fifth. Yeah, you're right. Actually, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That actually wasn't my question. Um, my question was more going back to the four, uh, uh, the four programs. Okay. Um, let's say if let's say that during execution, for some reason, one of these programs crashes. Okay. And now you're left with three programs that are still trying to execute. Will the time allotted change or will it still be one fourth of a millisecond? Okay, you mean crashes in the sense this is collapse, you, the process completely killed up. Is that, the, is that what you're yes. saying? Yeah, obviously. If, yes. this, if, mm -hmm. if you're actually disconnecting this process, which means, which means there are only three uh, uh, tasks on this process, right? Obviously, it will slice up to one third. Right? See, this process, right. this mm -hmm. process, this line is nothing but this. I'll just show you that. This process, the line, whatever I'm showing is nothing but, let me just go to task manager. You can see application, right? Let us say I have my Java application running. Right? And I go to process, right? I hope, Ron, you will be knowing this. So these are something called process, right? Am I right? These right. are process. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, whenever I'm drawing a line here, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, which means, so it is giving some one fourth of millisecond time of your CPU memory to do to this task. Am I right? Now here you can see how many processes right. are running. Mm -hmm. Here you can see how many processes are running, and you can see the CPU memory being allocated to each and every thing. Am I right? So now, now mm -hmm. let us say <clears throat> because these are some tasks which are actually loaded physically. You can see there I have some five tasks being loaded. But in background, there will be so many things running. First point, second point. Let us say you have killed your Excel, right? You have completely crashed or you, you, you directly mm -hmm. said, you directly just right click on this and just say end process tree, which means you are actually taking out of, taking out this task from your processing, right? Now what happens, your process mm -hmm. has got only three tasks as such. So what it does is it will obviously slice up for time for those three tasks immediately okay but the processing will be running up mm -hmm. as it is processing will never stop right okay uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah your processing will never stop anyways but the only thing is whenever it it, it the ta task is you know uh, completed or crashed even in the case of completed right let us say these two uh, these two tasks are completed which means i have got only two tasks right here which means again the time will slice up to one one one, one by two uh, half of a uh, time here again what happened mm -hmm. so the processing will be done on these two processing will be done on these two now let us say this got completed then the processor will completely spend time on this which is complete one millisecond will be spent on your media player and then, then this will be completed right clear yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that's what happened thank you yeah. yeah so here what is happening here is we are just you know uh, rounding up on each and every task based on the slice up your of your time so this is what we actually call as a round robin processing right so it happens actually in a real time process also so this is nothing but a round robin processing where your time slice up and your execution everything will run on parallel right and whenever we say this time, right, this time is, you can't see this time because based on the number of tasks or number of processes you are starting, like right, your time sharing will be. The second second, second uh, thing is, when I say it is spending one fourth of time, which means it is actually allocating some CPU memory for your task, for your uh, running of that. So that's why if you remember if you see some things like you know uh, if you open some word if you open some let me just open a word and excel right and something else you can see uh, everything will be running on parallel see there is running something parallel right because and it will take some time for you to load menus sometimes if you are opening a heavy document right so if I, if I open my excel and word you can see 
first you can see a white screen being loaded for Excel, let us say and board and then slowly your menus will load and slowly even after that your word menus will load and this ribbon will load as, as I'm not running anything else that's, that's why it opened fast but actually you can see the some you can see some time gap in between two tasks when they are heavy right so that is nothing but the processing is done uh, in that way and this is called as a round robin process and here any number of tasks can be added at, at, at any time so that is again there as one task is completed your memory or your time will be sliced up based on that in the same way whenever a new task is being added again whenever a new task is added again again your your uh, time will be sliced up based on the uh, number of tasks at that particular instance of time okay. now so this is called as your multitasking being done by one processor now so basically anyways in our in our uh, home standalone machines we will be having only one processor that one processor is more than enough for our home appliances or or even some even for some professional development that is more than enough now let us say you are running more than some applications you want to host it on your server right and there will be so many heavy applications being running so at that time your single processor will never work right so at that time we will go for something called multi processors let us say I have some microprocessor 1, microprocessor 2 and microprocessor 3 so you can actually mount multiple processors in your machine right if the slot is given but in servers they'll, they'll obviously provide multiple slots for mul uh, your processors or a memory a hard disk uh, mounters all these things you'll be having in servers now what happens here is whenever the, uh, we see multiple processors right now how the processing is done here now let us say i'm loading again the four tasks so what happens it will be shared upon these processors uh, uh, equally now first word will go to one and excel will go to two let us say right and your uh, media player is going to uh, three now again come back our outlook will again will be loaded to one right so this is how your processor will be loaded now what happens this processor will uh, spend half a time here and half a time here and this processor will will spend complete one millisecond on, on, on this task and again this so all so again it may not be the sharing may not be in this way the logic can be different but sharing will be done across the process that is for sure right and the time slice up will be done for sure and the processing will be done for sure right so here what we are doing is we are just creating a roof where we are actually using a multiple microprocessor so this thing is called as a micro sorry multi processing right so so when we load something called multiple tasks into one processor is called as a multitasking and for these multiple tasks if you use multiple processors that is nothing but your multi processing so technically speaking that is your multiple processing and multiple tasking now multiple if multiple uh, if your multiple uh, tasks Hello. Hello. Hello, Shinab. Yeah. Hello. I um. Is there any problem there? Yeah. Shinab. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Okay. Something happened. Yeah. We lost audio. Ah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's back. It's, it's back now. Okay. Fine. So. Fine. So it's clear now. So I'm using my headset actually. Anyways. Yeah. Fine. So that is your multiple processing and multiple ta multitasking actually so if you understood these two right now let us go and understand what actually is done on task first so let us see here let us say i am using my uh, word right word it a task now 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 you understand what is a task right 
so a task is something where your process memory is being created which means if you are creating multiple tasks you will have separate memories now you can see here for my go to meeting i have one process been running on where you have got some memory been allocated in the same way if you see your presentation i have opened my uh, ppt you can see a separate task and for separate task a separate process is being created and for this process you have something called a memory so in the same way for multiple tasks which means the main catch here is for each task main two things are happening separate process is is being generated and separate cpu memory will be allocated that is nothing but a task now let us take one task which means i'm taking one task in the sense i'm taking so for that let us say a word is a my, my one task which means this word will will be whenever i use my open my word one process will be created for which some cpu memory will be allocated right yeah so let's see what is actually happening inside word so now let us say inside word what we can do let us say the first basic thing what we can do is typing let us say right we can do something called typing now typing is again something which is a word or a word program my like ms office sorry ms word is allowing you to do some task on it right which means it should be it should be internally coded in ms word that yeah you can actually type on the editor of your word now whenever you start typing something like uh something like you know your spell check will be started right automatically whenever you are just typing on and whenever you move on to the next word next line your spell check will be running parallel in the same way your auto save will be running right auto save will be parallel running like uh, why we have auto save in each and every in, in any operating system for any product you will be having auto save so what is auto save is it will save uh, your state of your uh, task which means if you are doing something on word right for some intervals some let us say for each 5 seconds or 2 seconds your word will be saved in in a temporary memory not not saved into direct into your hard disk but will save in your temporary memory or or something called you know something which is in uh, in some word temporary memory now what happens so why do we need auto save is whenever your word crashes or something happens right at least some state of your uh, you know uh, work will be saved so that is what we have something called auto save right in the same way you will be having so many other tasks to this right you can have so many multiple tasks right if you take an example of excel your calculator will be running your script will be running and all so now you can see that in one task which is microsoft word which is taking one process and a standalone or or a single cpu memory is doing so many things which is a, a allowing us to type allowing us to allowing a uh, spell check start and allowing auto save and and so many other things right which means all these things will be done internal to same process and same memory will be used up across these things so these things are nothing but a threads which is multi threads right so these internal things are called as sing each and every th each and every entity are called as something called a threads being created in word which are using the same process and the same same cpu memory so as threads use same process and same cpu memory of that task so that's why they are they call as a uh, uh, called as light tasks or light threads or light tasks right lighter in the sense they uh, as as soon as you start something inside a task which is typing or spell check right a separate thread will be created why do we need a thread in uh, in in this application word because we have to do something which is parallelly it should be running parallelly but you can't you can't expect a microsoft word to allow only typing and when it is spell when is when is when it is checking a spelling right it should not block us from typing and when when it is saving it should not block us to do something else right 
so these are nothing but your multi threads now. and a multi thread is will is or can be created or should be created in a task first and your task whatever process and memory is been allocated that memory will be shared up across your threads so this is nothing but your multi threading so that is what we have a difference between a multi threading a multi tasking and a multi processing fine so this is a level where actually you go and do which is uh um, the same thing let me just copy up here where we have just seen multi processing which is came up to multi task and now we have something called in each and every task there can be something called different threads which are using the same process and all so this is nothing but your multi processing multi tasking and multi threading which will never be the same and um, and they will be running parallelly now so we'll be checking out how we can create multiple threads in one ta one task now what is our task whenever we write some program right we just wrote some program on let's, let us say exception let us say this is my program this is my program ex1 is my program now whenever you run it right which means a separate task is created right yes, a separate task will be created and for that task internally one main thread is running whenever you just run this main right or whenever you try to access or try to run this cls class which means you are creating a separate thread which is your jvm will create a separate thread for this execution and now whenever you start you know creating multiple uh, threads again inside uh, this right so what happens those thread will be shared up upon across your same process so that is what uh, uh we uh, so we'll be checking out how to actually create a multiple threads and how what are the different things we have in multiple thread right so that is nothing but your uh, this uh threading uh simple theory on this first right and we'll check out uh, you know multi uh, actually uh, getting into thread class what is a thread class and how actually we can write a thread uh, on uh, maybe on monday right so is that fine guys so that you know uh, we have uh, three people missing there so that uh, we can just wait till monday and uh, yeah do, do you mean uh do you mean tuesday morning uh, indian time right exactly yeah, yeah. tuesday morning because, indian i'm just okay. talking about your your monday yeah yeah right right you're right wrong yeah okay yeah <laughs> okay good yeah that's that's fine that's fine for okay. me yeah so till this part is anyways i'll be sharing the video i mean uh, purushottam also okay. will be sharing video so that you know we can just go through that right and uh, basically when we whenever we actually start uh, from java thread right so let, let's expect three more because we are three guys are missing here right so let's wait for till monday and we can continue right okay That's okay okay, okay then thank you have a great yeah, weekend let's wind up here everyone yeah yep. Hi. Okay. Bye, guys. Okay, and I'll see you on Monday. Bye. Take care. Take All care. Right, bye, bye. 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 Okay. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye. The organizer has ended the session.